everyone, it's Miss Callie here, and today we're going to be reading Zen Shorts. Michael, there's a bear outside, said Carl. A what? called Michael. A bear. He's really big and he's in the backyard. What is he doing? Michael asked. He's sitting. He has an umbrella, said Carl. An umbrella? Carl's watching. By the time the boys got outside, the sister, Abby, was already talking with them. I'm sorry for arriving unannounced, said the bear. The wind carried my umbrella all the way from my backyard to your backyard. I thought I would retrieve it before it became a nuisance. He spoke with a slight panda accent. Michael introduced himself. Then Abby introduced Carl because Carl was shy around bears he didn't know. And this is how Abby, Michael, and Carl met Stillwater. Carl being shy. Look at this big umbrella. And that's still water. The next day, Addie went to have tea with still water. Hello, Addie said as she stepped inside. Come in, come in, a faraway voice called. Then she heard the voice say, Oh, yes, come out, come out. Still water was in the backyard. So walking up to his house. Okay. A little bamboo plant. Maybe that's a cake. He was in a tent. This is a birthday present from my uncle Rye, Stillwater said. He always gives presents on his birthday to celebrate the day he was born. I like it so much that I'm not staying in my house right now. Stillwater invited Addie to sit with him. You brought me some cake, said Stillwater. That was very nice of you. Is it your birthday, he asked. No, said Addie. It's not mine either, said Stillwater. But let me give you a gift for my uncle's birthday. I will tell you a story. That's him in his tent. And that's the bamboo cake. Uncle Rye and the Moon my uncle Rye lived alone in a small house up in the hills. He didn't own many things. He lived a simple life. One evening, he discovered he had a visitor. A robber had broken into the house and was rummaging through my uncle's few belongings. The robber didn't notice uncle Rye and when my uncle said, hello, the robber was so startled he almost fell down. That's the robber being so startled. My uncle smiled at the robber and shook his hand. Welcome, welcome. How nice of you to visit. The robber opened his mouth to speak, but he couldn't think of anything to say. Because Rye never lets anyone leave empty-handed, he looked around the tiny hut for a gift for the robber. But there was nothing to give. The robber began to back away towards the door. He wanted to leave. At last, Uncle Rye knew what to do. He took off his only robe, which was old and tattered. Here, he said, please take this. Wow, he's giving a present to the robber. The robber thought my uncle was crazy. He took the robe, dashed out the door, and escaped into the night. My uncle sat and looked at the moon, its silvery light spilling over the mountains, making all things quietly beautiful. Poor man, laminated my uncle. All I had to give him was my tattered robe. If only I could have given him this wonderful moon. That's him looking up at the moon. Your uncle sounds nice, said Abby. I don't think I could have given away my only robe. I know how that is, said Stillwater. But there's always the moon. 
That was a good story, said Addie. Thank you, said Stillwater. And this is a good cake, thanks, said Addie. I made it myself. The next day, Michael went to see Stillwater. Here I am, Stillwater called from the tree. Can I come up, asked Michael. If you are careful, said Stillwater. Well, look at him all the way up in the tree. And there's Michael. What if we could fly, said Michael. We could cast shadows on clouds, said Stillwater. But what if we fell, said Michael. If we fell, we might break something, said Stillwater. That would be bad, said Michael. Maybe, said Stillwater. Maybe, asked Michael. Look at them so high up in the tree. Paper plane flying by. The farmer's luck. There was once an old farmer who had worked his crops for many years. One day his horse ran away. Upon hearing the news, his neighbors came to visit. Such bad luck, they said sympathetically. Maybe, the farmer replied. The next morning, the horse returned, bringing with it two other wild horses. Such good luck, the neighbors exclaimed. Maybe, replied the farmer. The following day, his son tried to ride one of the untamed horses, was thrown off and broke his leg. Again, the neighbors came to offer their sympathy on his misfortune. Such bad luck, they said. Maybe, said the farmer. The day after that, military officials came to the village to draft young men into the army to fight a war. Seeing that his son's leg was broken, they passed him by. Such good luck, cried the neighbors. Maybe, said the farmer. Oh no, that's him getting thrown off the horse. The draft, the good broken leg. And now he's just staying inside watching TV. I get it, said Michael. Maybe good luck and bad luck are all mixed up. You never know what will happen. Yes, the water agreed. You never know. He is a big panda. The day after that, Carl went to visit Stillwater. Michael said I couldn't bring over our stuff to go swimming. I'm mad at Michael. He's always telling me what to do. So I brought everything. Hmm, says Stillwater. It's a little pool. I don't know if all those things will fit. Let's see, said Carl. Let's see, said Stillwater. Stillwater looked at the pool. The things can go swimming, but we can't, he said. I brought too much stuff, said Carl. That's okay, said Stillwater. I'll help you carry it home later. I got all the stuff he brought. I think Carl's a little upset. Why does Michael always have to tell me what to do, Carl said. If you were here, I would climb up really high and I would jump on him like this and I'd do a big smash like this. Look at them playing. Jumping off of him. Jumping on him. Later, Carl and Stillwater had tea. Carl said Stillwater, you spent the whole day being angry with Michael. Didn't you notice how much fun we had? Carl watched the steam rise from his cup. I'm sorry I brought all that stuff, Carl said. You don't need to be sorry, said Stillwater. Right now, you need to carry. Hold on tight and I will tell you a story. Look at them having some tea. I love tea. And I know you guys love your tea time. A heavy load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman waiting to step out of her sedan chair. The rains had made deep puddles and she couldn't step across without spoiling her silken robes. She stood there looking very cross and impatient. She was scolding her attendants. They had nowhere to place the packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her across the puddle. The younger monk noticed the woman said nothing and walked by. 
The older monk quickly picked her up and put her on his back, transported her across the water and put her down on the other side. She didn't thank the older monk, she just shoved him out of the way and departed. That's not very nice. That's him carrying her. As they continued on their way, the young monk was prodding and preoccupied. After several hours, unable to hold his silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude, but you picked her up on your back and carried her. She didn't even thank you. I set that woman down hours ago, the older monk replied. Why are you still carrying her? He's asking why he's still asking about the old woman when he had already helped her. He needed to let it go. Do you think you've carried it long enough, said Stillwater? Yes, said Carl. Good, said Stillwater. And that is how Addie, Michael, Carl, and Stillwater became friends. Look, he's getting carried in by Big Paw. The end. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that story. I love you guys so much. Give yourself a big hug and a big kiss. I love you guys so much.